Hi, everyone. My name is Lee Honish. I am the former head loss mitigator for IndyMac Bank's HELOC division. I started in real estate and banking in 1988. I started off doing REOs and foreclosures by the age of eight, uh, 21. I'd already thrown out my first uh, 100 families to turn around and sell them as REOs for Beneficial of California. I went on to work for GMAC Homecomings, which started as Homecomings and GMAC Homecomings. I then became a residential real estate agent and developer. I built houses in Southern California. And I did that until I saw a market shift. I then went back to work at IndyMac Bank and was there for quite a bit of time uh, while those amazing loans were being made prior to the crash of 2000, really six. In 2006, I transferred into the home equity line of credit division of IndyMac Bank, where I was hired to be the head loss mitigator and ultimately negotiate short sales. I was there for the very first one there. I was hired for something totally different. I just saw them when they came in and I was the only one with asset manager experience when the market started to shift. I set out many of the protocols and guidelines and the ways that short sales are processed. And the reason most of you actually hate short sales to be perfectly honest. Uh, I did that. And I started to teach real estate agents while I worked at the bank on how short sales were processed with the blessing of IndyMac Bank. They thought it was, you know, a nice little connection between all parties concerned. And I did that for three years straight. I taught uh, three to five live presentations per day for three straight years. I, I trained literally tens of thousands of real estate agents. I created millions of views. Many of the programs you're aware of about short sales and distressed properties are all people that were taught by me in some way, shape or form back in 2007 to 2010. I became a private consultant in 2010 because I was being hired for the same price then that I'm still charging now. 10 hours with me is $500 an hour, flat fee, 10 hours, $5,000. That's my consulting fee. That's how many hours I work. And I guarantee you fundamental change in your business. In fact, I guarantee that amount of money that I will make a fundamental change in your business, either by the volume of leads you get, by the process to which you work for. These are things that are part of my experience. From 2010 to just about pre-pandemic, I have been working one very specific niche, the bottom of the real estate market. I've worked in the same niche my entire life, which is distressed property or default property. Let's discuss that. At 31 days at 5 p.m., you're 30 days late. You are in default. You are actively in foreclosure from that point forward. Now, state to state, it varies, right? What really matters is after 91 days at 5 p.m., you are basically rolled off to process for a notice of default, depending on your state. And from there, it's a notice of sale or, you know, whatever it is varies to your individual states. I can go into them individually, each and every state, but I talk in general ways. I realize that there might be people from the East Coast on the call, and for them, it's a judicial foreclosure, and there's list pendences involved. I'm not here to discuss that. I, what I'm concerned about is 91 days to six months delinquent. That is the niche of people that I work with. I work with those homeowners specifically, and what I do is I put real estate agents together with those homeowners so that they can sell their house uh, from 2010 to 2000 and. 19, 20, uh, I created marketing that I still use to this day, that I still teach, that's still the cornerstone of everything that I produce. And that marketing guarantees face-to-face -face with those homeowners. Uh, we've created scripting, we've created packaging, we've created branding, we've created websites, and everything is about getting you positioned as an advocate with those homeowners. And because of that marketing and because of working that niche, for a decade, I was named one of the most innovative marketers in America. So I work this very, very narrow niche of real estate, and it is truly something I never really wanted to do in my entire life. Uh, in 1988, just before I started this, uh, I asked, I told my father, actually, that I wanted to do, I, I wanted to be a chef. Uh, I'm actually a very shy and withdrawn person for those people who really don't know me that very that well. If you've seen me speak live, 
speaking, I guess, kind of brought me out of my shell more or less, but uh, I was a shy kid. I was actually a straight F student in school. I mean, I, I kind of maintained a D plus plus average all the way and through college. Uh, on top of all of that, I am actually dyslexic. Uh, I was not the best student. I was actually bullied while I was in school. Those are my personal traumas. Those are the personal obstacles that I've had to overcome over the last couple of decades, even as an adult. It's what affects all of us and what paints the way we view the world. When you're dealing with distressed people, you have to understand that those are people who not only have the same problems that you and I do. In the last uh, year or so, my father died. I went through a breakup. Um, I went through moving and relocation and everything else, right? And I had to remake my life so that I was in a better, happier place so that I could teach and educate for this market. In fact, I didn't want to work in this current market. I was aware of it during the pandemic. In fact, there were people encouraging me to start speaking again and to start doing webinars during the pandemic because of the forbearance agreements. I knew what that meant. It's not something I think. We're going to talk about these two words, think and know, okay? You guys have a lot of thoughts on what you think is happening with the market. There are things happening with the market that I know. The things that I think are, what's going to happen tomorrow? What will the depreciation be? How many people will be in foreclosure? Those are things I think about. What I know is that we have all the triggers in place, and I want to teach you those triggers. And with everything that I've had to overcome, certainly in the last 50 years, it seems like, including you know, dealing with whatever daddy issues I have for going to work for my father. And if any of you still work for family members, God bless you. It's really hard work. Uh, all of that has brought me to this moment where I have an opportunity to help a million homeowners and to train a thousand real estate agents. That is our mission here at Home Advocates. And that's what we're trying to achieve. We've already done live events. We do webinars probably three times a week throughout the country. Uh, we are going to go back on the road. Sadly, uh, the COVID variant has kind of slowed down live presentations again to some degree, and we're kind of understanding of all of that. Um, so I've kind of made it a point to keep up the number of webinars and the amount of information that's going out because it changes day by day, right? What is the moratorium? When is the moratorium over? When is the actual eviction process going to take place? The reason most of you are on this call I'm going to guess one is for information about what the market's going to do. And number two, you're a real estate agent or you're an investor and you're looking for another way to get listings or deals. That's it. I'm not naive to that process. Uh, I have been teaching real estate agents for 11 straight years as a private individual, as an entrepreneur, just like you. We're all in business for ourselves. I didn't want to become one of the top real estate marketing guys. I didn't want to be the foremost leading authority and expert on distressed properties. In fact, I was quite happy you know, doing marketing for pizza shops and gardeners and humble people who just wanted more business uh, coming through their front door, more leads, right? Uh, real estate itself is a very competitive market. I'm sure you guys are aware of that in your own markets, uh, not to mention on my side, as somebody who does marketing and coaching, it's hyper competitive, right? Everybody's looking for the best angle. Who's doing what? Who's got the right script? Who? It, I work one very specific thing. And what I can tell you about that one very specific thing in real estate, right? And if we break it down, uh, there's uh, you can do probate. That's a niche, right? That would make you an expert on probate. Got a lot of legal issues and it's kind of difficult to work in and tough to get your toe in the water. There used to be REOs. That's no longer a thing. Thanks to 2010 and the way we structured it to keep us from crashing further. So REOs are now out of the question. That leaves divorce. That's a public data source you can get your hands on and you can work that very specific. Some of you like to work just high-end properties. Uh, I understand that. That's being a luxury agent. Some of you prefer to work, I guess, with expired or canceled, I guess, or just work off of referrals. All of those are individual niches of how you do marketing. What I'm going to teach you today is that there are about a million and a half leads 
that are going to start appearing on the market. And I'm going to show you why that's going to happen and how you can list those properties. And you don't need to be an expert like me. Uh, I say this to my coaching students all the time. I do two coaching calls a week, one of them on marketing and one of them Q&A. And I constantly tell my group, you don't have to be uh, an expert, right? And that's the reality. You don't have to be an expert. You have to just know what you know and be good at what you know and connecting with people. And that's the truth of being successful in real estate. So 95% of us all suffer from the same problem, I'm included, right? We all suffer from the fear of being able to provide. It's a, it's a fundamental fact. So when you're dealing with distressed property homeowners, the people I'm about to introduce you to, uh, there are going to approximately be about a million and a half to two million of them. Now, again, that's a think number. I'm going to point these out when they're what I think and what I know. What I know, the minimum is going to be a half million. What I think, it can be as many as two, two and a half million. Where's the truth? Probably somewhere in the middle, somewhere around a million, million and a half new leads coming online, which almost every source has talked about bringing that data on the market uh, for listings, right? So the question you should have is, how do I meet these people? How do I position these people? What do I say to these people, right? And for those of you that are on the fence, I'm going to give you 10 facts and you can decide whether or not these leads are going to appear. And these are all actual things that are happening in the market. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the market for sure. And then I'm going to take some questions and answers. And if you guys want to see my solution to all of it and how we do it, we'll discuss it. So the, let's talk about 10 facts that are, and news for Jeff. All right. I will give you even some bonus ones that I'm kind of tracking right now uh, that haven't made my list that will probably make the, this list changes week to week. I change it to the 10 bigger facts. Number 10 fact, uh, if we're going to go from 10 to one and what I think is important, number 10, right? The eviction moratorium is over. Go ahead and write that down. The eviction moratorium is over. Now, physically being evicted state by state varies, but the eviction moratorium is over. And at the end of this month, the reporting of missed payments and people having forbearances is over. Does everybody understand that? Make sense to you, Jeff? Jeff was the last one to make a comment. I'm looking down here to kind of look at questions. I should probably put them up here where I can look at them a little bit. Let me see if that makes a difference. Uh, it doesn't really. I'm trying to set it up so that I can look at questions at the same time. Let's see if that helps at all. It doesn't really seem to help. What do I know? Um, let me get the chat bar up. You guys can certainly ask questions along the way if it makes you more comfortable for sure. Okay. There you go. All right. So everybody got that? Fact number 10, the eviction moratorium is over. So here's the key dates you need to be aware of. Um, the end of the month, or actually looking at the calendar, six days, reporting will start again, right? So everybody, 1.6 million, this is a non-disputable fact, uh, 1.6 million people have a forbearance agreement. At the end of the month, that's going to be reported to credit. Now, does everybody know this by a show of hands? I'm going to look over for this answer. By a show of hands, did you guys know this? That a forbearance is negative to your credit. Does everybody know that? Steven should. All my coaching students should know this. It's a negative thing, right? They're, so you've got the opportunity at the end of the month to pay back the for, forbeared amount, right? And so if you're looking for historical perspective, back in 2006, I sat in a meeting at IndyMac, and this is the first thing they wanted to do before loan months. So let's look at the progression of events and history repeats itself. And we all agree, right? Real estate history repeats itself. Real estate goes up, real estate goes down. We're all waiting for the triggers. So the first thing that the banks did was trying to do forbearance agreements. And that didn't really work. We did it here because that's what they wanted to do. That seemed like the logical course, I guess, in those meetings. And they thought that the market would correct itself. People would come back. The virus would be over and people would go back to their jobs. That simply did not happen. And this progressed for another 16 months. 
So the eviction moratorium itself is completely over. And at the end of the month, everybody who's got a forbearance is going to have something put on their credit. Why they only report this month late forbearance or months back as well. They're going to report everything that's back. Good question, Donald. So they're going to report everything. I'm going to make this clear. Does anybody remotely believe that a bank's going to forget how many payments are missed? I I don't know if I need to script anybody off of this or do some word challenges here, but uh, banks will not forget how many payments you owe them and how much money you owe them. And they're going to put it on your credit and they're going to come after that money as well, if that makes sense to everybody. Are there any questions on the eviction moratorium itself individually? I'm happy to answer those. I hit pause real quick. Any questions? It's a good question. I'll stop recording for a second. I want to take these one at a time. I think this is a good call. Anybody? Everybody got this? Ready for number nine? Jeff? Jeff, was that solid? Lori didn't know. Don didn't know. Yeah, Robert knew. Liza knew. Lori, good, good, good. All right. So everybody good right here? As ready for fact number nine? Let me go back to recording. I'm going to have to edit. I never saw. Well, number nine, one six, 1. 1.6 million people are delinquent per black night. Now, many of you are probably sitting there and go saying to me, but Lee, only 1.6 million people have a forbearance agreement. And that's true. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep saying it. If you have a forbearance agreement, you're delinquent you are considered delinquent by a bank. There is no cosmic entity, as far as I'm aware of, in over 30 years of doing banking, that you get a forbearance because you're not a defaulted loan. Does that make sense? So when they say that there's 1.6 million people that have a forbearance agreement, you can definitively say that there are 1.6 million people in default. Got it? Not kind of, sort of, a forbearance is not a positive thing. If you here are on this call and you took a forbearance agreement and nobody told you that it was going to be put on your credit or that you were going to owe that money or they were going to put that amount on your credit or it was going to be 200 hits of FICO points, uh, I'm not sure that anybody would have done it, right? That's why they didn't report it. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that work for you, Eliza? Looking over, does that make sense to everybody? Uh, does that work? Okay, good. That's it. There are 1.6 million people in default. These are things I know for a fact. These are all verifiable. You can use multiple sources to check these out. I don't care if you're right wing. I don't care if you're left wing. I don't care if you like Reuters as your news source. These are legitimate facts, okay? These aren't, I'm trying to spread it around. I will tell you when I'm thinking something, right? We, we covered that at the beginning, but these are actual facts. Number eight, the 10% rule from Wells Chase and B of A. All right, so when the biggest moratorium was lifted uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, right? It's when we came to the end of the first moratorium and everybody flipped out and, oh my God, Congress is on vacation and 7 million renters are gonna be evicted. They never talked about homeowners. Okay, And I'm not here to have any kind of speculation on what I believe the government feels about homeowners. My thought is that they don't care because they have equity. Does that make sense? The government, from their perspective, both the right and the left, okay, again, I'm not disparaging the two sides. They fundamentally believe that you have equity and therefore you should sell and take that equity out. It's why they're never addressed directly in the news. And if you're wondering if that means, does Lee think, not think, I know this for a fact, the government slants our news and the news slants our government, vice versa. It's kind of this weird, as a marketing guy, I look at both of them and it's just complete bullshit. Um, about 30 days ago, 45 days ago, and you can look this one up, Wells Chase and B of A released a joint statement, right? Wells had just canceled doing uh, equity lines 
Wells Chase and B of A at that time all tightened up their lending restrictions. Again, facts. Uh, and then the news then processed out how crazy Wells Fargo, and this is what the exact words they use. Wells Fargo CEO is crazy for getting rid of equity loans. And it's harmful because people have that equity and therefore they should be able to get those loans. They're hurting homeowners, which is complete crap. Okay. If you own the money, you can decide how you want to lend the money out. And I believe, I fundamentally believe that both the right and the left think that they should have a say in how that money should be spent. They have a direct relationship with the banks. They have a direct relationship with the market. They have a direct relationship with the Fed. It is all very much controlled and very much under thumb. Uh, there's a lot of regulation that goes on in a bank. Nobody makes arbitrary decisions about pulling product off the market. All of those things are discussed, rediscussed, and discussed again. So they all released a joint press statement uh, about 45 days ago, and it was all over the news. And in that, Wells Chase and B of A all said definitively that 90% of their portfolio was performing. They rounded to 90%. So based on Black Knight, if you want to go with facts on what's been released, um, I've never really seen it much higher than seven or eight percent for some of the markets for delinquency state by state state. Uh, but I, I do understand their point of just sort of rounding it arbitrarily to 10 percent. What's the truth? Probably five or six percent. And again, this is something I think based on their press release is probably about five to six percent. And they count these homeowners right? These forbearance homeowners as delinquent. I think everybody's got that all screwed up about what's severely delinquent and who hasn't made payment. Who cares? 1.6 million people have a forbearance agreement. They're all in default. Got it? That's the way Wells Chase and B of A are counting it. And by the way, that's an estimation. Nobody knows exactly because Wells Chase, B of A, US Bank, everybody else, nobody is really disclosing all the numbers. They're just sort of rounding in these general ways. I'm thinking guessing and or assuming that when it comes to defaulted numbers, they're rounding down. When they're positive numbers, they round up. In this particular case for item number eight, they rounded up to 90% of our portfolio. Okay. Liza, if you were under forbearance during the pandemic, uh, when does this bank start reporting your lates? Uh, the 30th, Liza, good question. On the 30th. Michelle Hayes, if you sell your home and pay off the balance, including forbearance amount by September 15th, actually by September 30th, will it show up on October 31st? By September 30th. By September 30th. Not the 15th, the 30th. You can get it done by the end of the month. You're good, Michelle. Good question. Got it? Anybody good right here? Facts. Number seven, the interest rate's way too low. It's artificially too low. And we're buying back bonds. Good Lord. Every time we talk about tapering off of bond purchasing, the market, you know, throws a tantrum and that's what they call it, a market tantrum. But let's exclude that. That's gross economics and inflation. And it's not my skill set. My skill set is the lending interest rate. So everybody agree that this interest rate is ridiculously too low and that it will never sustain itself. Like you cannot keep the interest rate that low forever. So let's just go with that one simple fact. I'm going to go back to Jeff on his news thing. Or for anybody who's here going, oh, this is all bullshit. All right. If they raise the interest rate back to where it was pre-pandemic, right, which is basically a full point up, you don't think that's going to have an impact on prices and purchasing? That's a fact that it will have an impact on those. It's a fact, okay? Not something I'm thinking about. These are things that I know about as an absolute fact. Liza, if you were, okay, got that. Uh, if you were under forbearance during the pandemic, when does the bank start reporting lates on the credit report? September 30th, October 1st, technically. Liza, will we start seeing the first round of NODs January, 2022? No, we're seeing them right now. Everything's increased by uh, 20% right now. Somewhere between 10 and 20%. Uh, Liza, will we start seeing the first round? Yeah, uh, there you go. So the interest rates are way too low and the interest rates will come up. I don't care what you think. This isn't something I'm thinking about. This is something I know 
because I can plot the interest rate and tell you that we're way too low and they're going to bring it back up. I don't know if they're going to do it with the Fed's tapering off of buying bonds, which they're doing in the amount of, am I correct, $40 billion a month or some ghastly amount to maintain what they're doing? I don't keep up with that. That's big government dollar deflation value of money. Weird shit. Uh, number six, the values are way too high, right? So yes, in some markets, they say supply and demand issue, right? Uh, we don't have enough supply for the number of people who want to buy. And that is certainly a thing. What's more important that you need to note, again, a fact, not a thought. The jobs don't equal the appreciation rate. Does that make sense? So the number of jobs and what people make at those jobs does not support, generally speaking, market to market, what people can afford as a monthly payment. And that actually includes rent, which takes me into number five. Rents are too high too, okay? Rents are too high, values are too high, interest rates are too high. If these things come back down, they're going to have an effect on the overall market, right? Facts, these are facts. Number four, millennials. And when I say consumers, I'm just saying millennials because that has been sort of the sweet spot, honey spot, honey, whatever that most of you in real estate have been most interested about, which is um, millennials, right? Sort of the National Association kind of jammed that down everybody's throat that millennials were the biggest buying group. Well, 66% of those millennials say they're not going to buy or sell because they believe that there's something wrong with the market. And if you look market to market, there are markets that have days on market going up. There are some markets that have prices coming back down. Is it happening everywhere? Most everybody on this call is the Western portion of the United States. If you use Texas as our draw down the line, this is just sort of everybody on the West Coast. Next week, I'm going to talk to people on the East Coast. That'll be even crazier, but uh, these rules don't change. 66% of people say that now's not the right time to buy or sell uh, because there's a fear that the market could drop. There's a fear that the prices are too high. Uh, there's just general fear and unknowing. And a lot of people are having difficulty making the payments as they are. Number three, this is the last month for the no reporting. We talked about this earlier for forbearance and missed payments. This is, now we're getting into crunch time things that I think are the biggest things. Three, two, and one, in my opinion, are the three biggest facts. This is the last month, September 30th, all the reporting's over. And I already know it because the reporting's already picked up. Uh, I provide leads as part of our coaching and marketing. And the data that we're getting is increasing exponentially. And I'm still only what I can get through sources, right? Title, realty track, property radar, the normal sources. I'm only looking at about 20% of what it was pre pandemic. Does that make sense? So during just before the pandemic, and they started doing all this when they turned off the FICO system, when they turned off reporting, when they started handing out forbearance agreements, we had just about uh, 400,000 people in default. Got it. Uh, right now, what I'm seeing is only about 20% of that. And those 400,000 haven't really come back on the market either. Take it for what it's worth. Any one of these will have tremendous impact on the market. Number two, credit reporting and filing has indeed increased. Uh, it's picking up week after week, month after month. Fact use whatever source you want, I would recommend talking to your title company and start keeping an eye on NODs. Just ask for a weekly count to verify the increased numbers. This is, think of it as a lead source, right? If expired started to expand exponentially week after week, like gaining 10 or 20% more week after week, wouldn't you start to work on that particular niche? From a marketing standpoint, for those of you in real estate or if you're an investor, you have to look at the best possible source to get that information, right? And the number one thing that I get it from my agents, I get it from homeowners, uh, and this is a fact. The government failed to fix it. This isn't something I think. This is something I know. Does anybody dispute this? 
I mean, this is like a legitimate 100% thing. We've all heard it. They had $45 billion to hand out to renters and homeowners in households that made less. And by the way, collective households that made less than $99,999. They only managed to get $2 billion out. I imagine that other, I, I rolled my eyes. I imagine the other $43 billion will magically disappear. That's me being cynical and that's just a thought. But the fact is they failed to get it done. Congress went on vacation. The moratorium never held down. Renters are going to get evicted. Homeowners are going to start getting reported. And the question is, is it going to cause a crash? Will it cause a slowdown? Will it cause prices to go down? Will it cause interest rates to go up? The question is, how many of these people are there? I think that's the biggest think question, right? I can go by Black Knight data and I can go by Market Watch data and I can go by Zillow data and say, it's about a million and a half. My, and I would say this to all of you, right? Or NODs for the sake of discussion, Sean. Uh, you're gonna see over the next, I wouldn't say year, I think it'll be quicker than that. And again, I think it'll be quicker than that. I think they want to get everything out in Q4 before they get to Q1. Does that make sense? This is more of a banking accounting system. So we kept the interest rates down. We kept everything up. We kept the stockholders happy. Forbearance agreements had no impact on stock prices because it's not seen that way, right? You're tacking the deal onto the back end and therefore we didn't see a dramatic uh, change. And you can check this. We didn't see a dramatic change in the stock value as well as Chase B of A, US Bank. No dramatic change. So we go through Q3, everything stays strong. Lending tightens up. They cut out uh, all the shakier loans like uh, uh, equity lines and car loans to be level. Uh, generally speaking, all the banks are just lending to second tier lenders who are making the shakier loans, the Alt-A subprime loans. And those companies, for the sake of discussion, like a Quicken, is borrowing from the three major banks on a short-term loan. Then those banks, we're talking about tranches and trenches, and I don't want to get really technical, but we're doing the same thing we did in 2007. We're taking out these short-term loans. We're selling those off to Jenny May. Jenny May is talking about having a 40-year loan modification for people that are delinquent. So here is my advice. It is important for people to get their equity out. I think it's important for people to, what we call a dignified solution, which is, you know, do what's best for their family. People, I'm going to teach you one of the very few things my father taught me. With all my daddy issues, to be perfectly honest, there are very few things I teach about my father, but there, there are two facts that I try to teach as constantly as I can, and this is the one I'm going to teach you guys. People who don't pay, don't pay. When I evicted my first family, uh, I didn't want to evict them. I thought they were really nice people who just weren't able to make their payments, and I thought, well, why don't we just leave them in there while we find someone to buy the property or clean up the property? To which I was told that people who don't pay don't pay. And that's why you evict them. They're never going to pay. So no matter what everybody believes about there'll be a loan mod, there'll be a four. I, I know this historically, doing the marketing and coaching people. I've got hundreds and hundreds of coaching students. I've been doing this for a decade. People who don't pay, don't pay. But the problem is the governments, the banks, real estate agents, people who don't know their ass from a hole in the ground make promises to homeowners, which keep them in this too long, right? So when they finally do get to a real notice of sale, where the bank is really going to put the property up and auction it off, depending on the state, they don't know what to believe anymore. And they run out of options and they lose out on the equity that's in their walls. It's our goal at Home Advocates to try to explain the difference between foreclosure and the equity they have in their house. This isn't a short sale market. I don't know why when I say distressed, everybody immediately jumps to short sales. And I get, I'm sort of the godfather of short sales. I'm the punxatani fill of distressed properties. But the, the simple basic reality to all of this is, um, these are people that are really uh, in a very stressful situation and they don't know what to believe and they'll believe anything that has hope. And nobody's giving them the appropriate education. 
And truthfully, what we've discovered, because we've been teaching this, we've retooled, we've created scripts, all the marketing's been updated. Everything's updated to this market that we are currently putting out for our coaching students. We're watching them list within three or four follow-ups. So that means from the first time you meet them to within approximately three to four weeks, they understand that they need to sell because the market is shifting and it's, it's very loose and they're worried, right? And who would want to lose out on equity in their home? And it's because people don't educate correctly. On top of that, I'll give you my, because Jeff asked for these, right? Actual news items. Number one that you kind of look for are some of these keys, right? One of them is fraud. Fraud is a big dictator on a market crash or a market correction. The fraud right now is coming from investors taking advantage of these people that we're discussing. They're going in, they're targeting elderly, they're targeting um, non-savvy people and offering them cash, moving them out. Because there's no credit reporting, they're taking advantage of that. They're moving them out, they're deeding the property over, and they're doing rehabs while the other person is left holding the bag. And if the whole thing goes sideways, the only person responsible is still that homeowner. That's kind of the fraud I see right now. That's not something I think about. This is something I know because I go out and I meet with homeowners and I go out and do the marketing that I teach my students. Um, this is the number one thing that is asked about in our coaching group. What do I do about this nice old woman who has moved out and given $2,000 cash or that's what's happened. That's the fraud that's currently happening on the market. The question will be what happens after reporting starts, right? And that's my fear. If we start to overlook the FICO system, which Wells Chase and B of A are kind of talking about doing, it, it leaves a lot of doors open for additional types of fraud. I'm worried about that. Number two, price of lumber has dropped dramatically. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, prices on lumber being up, housing prices are up. Prices are coming down on lumber, et cetera. Uh, that's a real problem too. That's an actual fact. And then there's Evergrande. God knows how much real estate they hold in the United States. And I don't know what it means for the China, China version of Lehman Brothers to crash. I know what it meant when Lehman crashed here and what that did to the global economy and why they went to the trouble of bailing and fixing and taking care of the situation they did. I don't believe China can do that for Evergrande. Um, but Evergrande is having the same problem and they're taking on too much debt and it has a global impact. These are all happening simultaneously as we come to the end. Those are items that I haven't really decided whether or not they make the top 10 yet. But there's so much in the stew. Here's my question that I present to all of you, and I'll take your questions for just a couple of minutes. Then I'll show you how I get listings. And we'll call it a day and you'll be out of here by one o'clock. Um, my question is really simply this. <clears throat> this is a big giant stew pot with all these things going on. The 10 facts that I've given you are absolute facts, okay? You should learn them. You should brand yourself as someone who understands whatever fact you want. Any one of these facts would be enough to have a conversation. In fact, I'm giving you guys right now a link to everyone. That's the last webinar I did, and it's actually got the PowerPoint up and you can download some PowerPoint pieces and you can also download some marketing pieces as well. It's 100% free. I don't even ask for your email. I already have them technically. This is about having conversations and finding people who are not able to make payments, listing and selling their house. Does that make sense? Any one of these items will be more than enough, but you should know the general news and what's being reported and what's not reported. The one that bothers me the most right now that they're no longer reporting about evictions at all. We went from rage and outrage over eviction starting to, okay, the Supreme Court got rid of it to no one talking about it at all. So if you don't believe that there's a direct connection between government and news, then you would be completely wrong. These are facts. They're not talking about it 
the same way. And until people are in outrage or until everything starts to slide away, they're not going to talk about it again. I say this all the time, and you can make this decision for yourself about how you want to interact with this market. To me, it seems that people in real estate, investors, agents, brokers, whomever, I've been here for 30 years. And it seems that people adjust to the market after the market has already turned. They don't act proactively, right? You can see the writing. You can see that this is happening. You know that the real estate market cycles itself every 10 years, right? It goes in another direction every 10 years. This is a historical fact. Um, history always repeats itself in real estate. The interest rate will go back up, okay? Uh, the overinflation of the dollar is a fact. These are things that'll all get corrected. And they are things you need to be aware of if you're looking for a way to get a listing. And here's why. You're right. It is a supply and demand issue. And right now, the supply and demand issue for all of you, two or three million people in real estate, investors, agents, brokers, whomever, you have a limited number of supply using traditional methods to get those listings, right? And now here we go into the distress world that's coming back online. This is your opportunity to start working and meeting with those people immediately. And that's what we're going to talk about for the second part of this. All right. Let's move forward and talk about how to do mark, marketing to these individuals. And that's our mission here. We're here to help 1,000 agents reach 1 million homeowners. And that does mean a lot of listings for all of you. I'm not naive. So I'm going to show you how we do our marketing for distressed properties and then what our conversations and our conversions look like. This is a formula that has been working for the last decade. It's got me named one of the uh, top marketers in America for over a decade. I'm going to show you everything. I know a lot of people say that on these uh, webinars and they lie, right? They allude to it and I've got this or it's going to wind up being something like that. I'm going to show you everything. I think the only way to achieve my goal of helping a million homeowners is to show everything and demystifies uh, the entire distressed property market. I know that people are afraid of it. I know everybody thinks it's a short sale. I know what everybody thinks about it. The truth is, it's just people making bad decisions and you can help them. So to understand that, you need to understand that mentors have mentors. When I talked to you from a place of my position, there were three books that fundamentally changed my direction, my outlook, and my view on the world. The first is The Four Agreement by um, Don Miguel Ruiz. When you go into doing distressed properties, I cannot stress this enough. Um, you cannot take anything personal. But uh, the four agreements in my own personal life and over the last year or so have had a profound change in my life. The marketing I'm about to show you is based on a man I'd like to call mentor and friend, Seth Godin's Permission Marketing, that was really uh, literally written in 2000. And it outlined exactly everything that's happening in the market. When I created my marketing approach, it is built uh, because I read this book. It has taught me, it, it is the way we coach our group. Everything we do is based on permission-based marketing. And last but not least, the secret. For those of you who mentally just rolled your eyes or you physically rolled your eyes at the screen as you saw all this, um, well, if you have a negative outlook on what's about to happen or what I'm telling you, then uh, it won't happen. Uh, it's the truth. Whatever you put out is what you're going to get back. If you're a miserable person, you're going to be surrounded by miserable people. Uh, positive people have positive things happen around them. Uh, it is much easier in my life as a guy who worked in the business of pain and extraction to live in a world of happiness and working towards service to benefit other people. And the effects have been completely profound and life-changing for me. So you can take my advice or not when it comes to it. But generally speaking, I know this for me. I was the problem in my own universe. 11 years ago, I invented a system to take care of me, uh, to take care of my family, my daughter. Uh, this is her. She just recently turned 17, good God, uh, and is in her final year. 11 years ago, to the day, I invented a marketing approach called Monster Marketing. Got me named one of the top uh, marketers in the United States. Got me featured on a bunch of websites. It's a great book. 
Uh, I have coaching students who are specifically monster students, and that has spawned into something called uh, Advocate Marketing System. I took all of that and I recreated everything into what we're dealing with today. This is built on the backbone of that system. And I am very happy for the first time to be showing it to you from the back end. These are actual screenshots from my own system. Nobody ever goes inside and shows off this kind of stuff. That's why I'm doing it. So what you're looking at, when you sign up for our program, you get access to three modules. That's what they call them on Kajabi. The first one is the advocate marketing system. That's the overview and the training. The second is the home advocates community. In the home advocates community, you can ask questions 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I could answer it. Uh, my CEO, Derek, could answer it. Uh, one of the other students can answer it. The idea is interaction so that we all build and grow together. And the last is what we call the hub. The hub is where everything in our program is located. So again, the first module is our home advocates marketing system, which is step-by-step. -step. The community itself, very simple to navigate, type something in, I get notified as does Derek. And the last is the hub. The hub is pretty amazing. It's where we house every single marketing approach and technique, and we're going to cover all of those. The first of those is called the 12-step program. That is our marketing approach, and I will show it to you. But we also have a face-to-face -face method uh, as well as so many other modules, right? Uh, we have our coaching calls. We do three coaching calls per week. We have an express buyer program where you can get a larger commission share. We have an investor portal for investors to uh, submit their deals and or get help putting their deals together. So if you're an investor, we will help you do that. Uh, we have a brand new uh, module. I had to actually look. It's the Think Like Lee series like me. One of my coaching students was under the weather and had major surgery and asked me what should he read, what should he watch. So I've been updating this once every couple of weeks, putting in books that I'm currently reading and or movies that I currently watch. You can go in there. All of those are available for download. Uh, we have a massive, massive uh, archive of video and documents that are available for you. It is over 11 years of working in distressed properties. And we've even included a white label port, uh, one for books. So for those of you that are thinking of signing up and doing a book, we have white label books that you can put your name on and immediately start using. Get them printed if you'd like. In fact, um, you know, go have a book signing. So let's go back to the hub and let's talk about um, the face, our very, very, very straightforward uh, systems. And let's talk about the ones you have access to. The first is what we call starting from zero methodology. Let me keep track of time. Uh, we want to teach you what to say and how to say it while you're out with people. And first marketing method is what we call the talk it up method. We arm you with a marketing piece and a script so that when you meet people on the street, uh, that you will be able to assist them. To back that up, I'm going to show this real quick, which is the website. Everybody who signs up, this is Home Advocates front page. These are people who signed up that are all home advocates. Okay. That information is literally there that if somebody calls in the 800 number, or sends an email to advocate at home advocates, I can forward it on to you since you are a part of this company. That makes sense to all of you. So let's talk about this method. First is how you package yourself and how you present yourself. I don't know how you like to go out. Uh, I always talk about it from my personal perspective, which is I fear rejection. And I have a lot of issues because of that. Uh, I wasn't very good in real estate when I did it because I didn't like rejection. I didn't like knocking on doors. Um, so I tend to be a little more standoffish. This method I'm about to show you works in no matter what situation. If you're going to go out dressed up in a suit, a black suit or whatever, or you're out with your child, right? It happens to me a lot at my daughter. My daughter does color guard and I'll be in line or I'm next to one of the other parents and they will ask me what I do. That's what this is based on. It is based on the interaction of what do you do, right? You can go out and you can force it. You can go out and meet people. At, this is day to day out on the street. I challenge everybody in my program to go meet five people a day so that you can get one solid lead. 
so far to date for the last three months of this challenge. If you talk to five people, I guarantee you're going to find one person that meets the following criteria. And that's what's important in this scenario, right? That means I only have to talk to, I'm going to say it again, five people to find one person that's having an issue because of the current market. Does that make sense? Okay. So the second thing you'll need is a business card. We provide this for you. We have a generic one on our page, right? On the very front is a, a testimonial. And then on the back is your information. If you need additional information on there, don't worry about it. You can add it. Uh, we make, it, it's a template that you just download. We even give you access to the same printer company we use. I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks to get these things printed up. Uh, we don't make any money on the printing. We just give you the templates ready to go. Because what you want to hear from somebody is what do you do? So follow this methodology. Somebody asked me, I'm out with my daughter or I'm dressed up. What do you do? You look like you're a business professional. The current message I'm telling my students right now is that we fix broken real estate. That's one of the messages. The other message we've been working on for the last couple of months is I work with people who've missed payments because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Either of those will work. Each month, we're going to build new marketing messages for our coaching students. This is the second month. Uh, and this month's message is we fix broken real estate because I want the next engagement, right? So again, this is like web hooks or whatever terminology you want to use or the psychology. This is about creating a rapport and dialogue. And this is a very systematic approach. I'm asking for the next question. And the next question is, uh, what, what does that mean, right? When I say that I help people with missed payments, what does that look like? What does that mean? When I tell people that I work with, uh, I do real estate, I fix real estate is broken, right? Or some variation thereof. That gets the question. I can go into the list of 10 things I know about the market. There's a lot. More importantly, it gives me the opportunity to go, well, I'll explain it like this. Do you know somebody who tried to get a forbearance agreement or a loan modification uh, because of COVID or has missed a payment for that matter during COVID? Again, the testimonial and the credibility is all here, right? That's what you do. You're just representing it. And your training is that way. We do a one-on-one. -on -one. You will become an advocate when you work with us. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down, hey, here's my information in case you come across someone. Now I've got a walking billboard. Or they tell me they know someone, right? I'm going to make sure they get my information, but I'm also going to make sure that I get that person's information. Next, what I'm going to tell them to do is I'm going to persuade them with a stronger testimonial. They're going to ask me, who do you work for and how do you do that? I'm going to tell them to open up Google on their phone. Do it all the time. I do it in my live presentations when I'm talking to room. When I'm even talking to someone and I'm building rapport, the first thing I'll do is open up Google and then type in my case, Lee Honish. In this particular case, home advocates. And when you do... The Distressed Property Solution comes in line one right now. And I'm going to show you that this has not changed at all. Let me get a page up. Okay. And I'm going to make it an incognito window for all of you. Okay. There's an incognito window. I'm going to go to Google. And I'm going to type in Home Advocates. And there we are, page one, line one, right on the front page, when you click on it, is your name as one of our advocates. You've built a lot of credibility at that moment. And here's why. All of our information takes up the first lines, but we're over California programs, we're over healthcare programs. You would be surprised how many home advocates organizations there are that we just leap right in front of to put ourselves in first position. And that's so that we can get to and help lots of people. That's one method. The second method, and this is straight off the hub, is our 12-step program. This is our direct marketing method. Our direct marketing method has 12 simple steps. I've actually put 13, but it's amusing to me. And I'm going to go through each step so you understand how our direct marketing works to see if you can actually do it. We do not believe in working harder just for the sake of working harder. I once saw a video by one of the coaches that's out there 
that claimed you had to work 40 to 50 hours to get yourself a listing. Uh, I don't say that at all. In fact, that's the least from the truth. I am a work smart, not hard guy. I only want my agents to put in a couple hours worth of work each week. So first thing they're going to do is send us an email and let us know that your call center is all set up for you. And these have actually, one and two have actually changed. We automatically send you your leads. Uh, we just want you to notify us right now when you're going to start your first batch of tagging. Okay, then you go to step three. You're going to order some Avery Label 6464s from Amazon. Easy. They are six to a sheet. Uh, I actually did this on a coaching call today. Then you're going to download and print our marketing piece uh, because it's already got a call center already on it. So you get your lead sent to you. You just order these six name labels that are repealable and you print out this marketing piece that has a call center on it already. That's how it looks. Real simple. Print it out. Uh, it's already got a call center on it. And so the next thing you want to do is take the list that we've sent you, pick out 12 properties. You're going to take those marketing pieces up there in the corner. You're going to write their last name and their tracking number on there, right? We use Root XL. There's actually a video on my YouTube page of me doing all of this in a FedEx office. Then you're going to prepare your list, put them all in order, the 12 you're going to go see. You're going to follow your route that's printed out on the Root XL sheet. And you're going to put out 12 marketing pieces. You're either going to put it on the mailbox, the front door, or the garage door. You're not going to interact with the homeowner. They will find this. Okay, don't do hundreds and hundreds. This is put 12 to 18 out, then put 12 to 18 out. I can tell you definitively that this works, and I will show you uh, tangible proof of that in just a second. So once you've done that, go home. You don't need to knock on the door. You don't need to do anything separate. Simple, 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 especially for people that are in really hot states. Like you can go do this in the middle of the night or four in the morning when it's cooler. Why would you go out in the middle of the hot part of the day to go put these out, which to me is mind blowing that people do that. This is designed to be put out any time of day, seven days a week, does not matter. There's no hours to putting out a marketing piece. Uh, you will get a call from our call center, right? Theoretically, you will have already have done your one-on-one. -on -one, so you're ready for your first appointment. And then there's a link. Okay, I got an appointment, now what? You click that link, it's gonna give you your entire first package. You will have already have done a one-on-one. -on -one. We have a Thursday coaching call on scripting and conversions completely. And I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna do next when it comes to that. Uh, let me check your time. How are we doing? Good. So what you're looking at are leads for this system. Uh, when I last did this webinar, so I don't know how far back this is, but these are actual leads. And this is how they come to you. Emails, phone numbers. They schedule between Tuesdays and Thursdays at, uh, after 3 p.m. This is a general mailbox. Everything comes through me and I send them back out. Your initials are on each of the tracking numbers that you put out. And therefore, I know this is Richard French. Simple as that. Uh, <laughs> and you just put these on the property. You don't engage. It's all over and that simple. Which takes us to the next part. What do, you know, what do I do? What do I talk to them about? Number one, let's talk about the timeline to your monetization. So is a listing or a sale going to take place on your first face-to-face -face meeting? Yes. Will it happen on your thousandth meeting? Yes. If that makes sense, you should know this from working any other data type whatsoever, cancels, expires, probates, whatever in real estate. And I've done real estate marketing for a very long time. Your first point of contact is your first point of contact. The only thing that we ask at Home Advocates is that on your first appointment that you educate them before you ask them to list their house. We ask one thing and one thing only. And we have found that doing this one thing, educate them on your first appointment, right? Will build credibility and will turn into lots of listings on the backside for you. So, this is the exact script that we teach our people for their very first appointment. Hi, my name's Lee. Are you aware you are actively in foreclosure? And I'm going to hand them a notice of default or a notice of sale. I know many of you are looking at me going, but what if they ask you? That's not the point. None of you are going to be experts like me. You're not. I've been doing it for over 30 years. That's the truth. What I can empower you with is the fact that none of that matters. They want what you have that I lack right, which is empathy and sympathy for their situation. 
and you can give them good information and not try to sell them. If you can adhere to that on the first meeting only, okay, and follow these steps, you'll be fine and you will get listings and you will convert them, right? So the next thing that's going to happen, step two, I'm a homeowner advocate and I'm here to present your alternatives to foreclosure. We tell you to print out two copies and take them with you. Give one to the homeowner and keep one for yourself. And then just read them. Option one, do nothing. Option two, pay off or refinance. And if you're sitting there going, what if they say, that's what I want to do? Let's go through the options if they don't do them. Do nothing. Homeowner says, that's what I plan to do. Do nothing. Then I guarantee that the bank will foreclose. <coughs> that's simple. Do nothing never works out. Option two, pay off or refinance. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you have any money, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner? Option three, reinstate. Again, C number two, which is do you have any money? Do you have a job? Do you have a way to pay back everything to reinstate to exactly where it is, right? Option four, partial claim, right? This is taking out like a HELOC or a second position to, you know, compound it into one thing. For those of you who don't know, Wells Fargo took that away, as many banks have quietly. Those HELOCs and those equities for partial claims and, and don't exist. Takes us to the one that does happen, and it is currently happening. Deed in lieu of foreclosure. Homeowners taking cash, giving their keys, walking away, deeding them back to the bank quietly. And that's been happening all through the pandemic. So... It's real easy, in my opinion, to script someone off of it. And here's why. Uh, a deed in lieu of foreclosure is the same as a foreclosure. And if you're okay giving up on all the equity in your house to just take a few thousand dollars, well, I'll be happy to give you a few thousand dollars and you can deed the house over to me. But it's ridiculous. It's the same method that investors use in assuming loans. They give the homeowner some cash. They deed the property over. They may or may not make the payments. And then they fix it up and they sell it. <coughs> Whatever the case, I'm not a fan of deed in lieu of foreclosure because it's the same as a foreclosure. Bankruptcy. I don't really have to have the discussion here because I'm not an attorney when I meet with a homeowner. But I can say safely as a former banker, and you can say safely as an agent or even as an investor, that I have never heard of a bankruptcy situation where someone was able to keep their house. It's true. I'll wait, did they set it aside? They think by filing bankruptcy, that's somehow going to make the payments okay. That's not the case. You'd have to use cram down theory and get the, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't happen. I was really gonna get into it, it just doesn't happen. Option seven, loan modification, right. Jenny May is coming out with a 40 year loan mod. This is more of the government fixing it, right? Jenny May is buying up all the quote unquote B paper out there and, uh, they're talking about a 40 year loan mod. So my question to the homeowner is to get qualified for a 40 year loan mod. Do you have a job? Do you have an income? It's just like doing a loan. The word loan is in it. So start asking them loan questions. Did they have a loan mod before? Did they fail to make the loan mod? Right? Keep it simple. Option eight, forbearance. Oh, I didn't do the forbearance agreement during the COVID-19 thing. Can I do the forbearance now? Yeah, you probably can but you're gonna to have to pay that money back. It's gonna be put on your credit. It's gonna be a negative mark on your credit. By the way, I don't think anybody who took out a forbearance agreement realizes that the banks all know that you took out a forbearance agreement and they aren't refinancing people who took out forbearance agreements. That's a fact. Option nine, sale. I would hope that all of you know uh, option nine and what to do if they go, I wanna sell the house. My advice is this, wait till your second appointment to sign it, okay? I say 10 or nine. Those are the nine alternatives to foreclosure, which is going to lead to step three. <clears throat> Once I've done that, I just have one question before I leave. I, I just wanna know what did the bank do to you? And the reason we call it the million dollar closer, this was taught by one of our students at our mastermind. We have another one coming up at the end of March. And out of these masterminds, I want people to interact and come up with these lines because we've been doing this for 11 years, this marketing method. And this is one of those methods. This is ultimately going to be followed up with, and you will have a second meeting with them. You're going to deliver whatever information you agreed to bring back. They go, hey, I want to learn more about loan mods or forbearances, or hey, I want to talk to that banker guy you work for, Lee. 
great. As one of my students, as one of the advocates in this program, you most certainly can have me talk to them. Okay, but I'm not here to script them into a sale. I'm here to give them information only. Does that make sense? Uh, so whatever they're thinking of doing, I will explain the pros and cons, whether they want to hear it or not. So be careful when you push that nuclear launch code button of, Lee, I need you to talk to them. Okay. They could easily scare them off just as well as convert them. I tell that to all of my students. I am me. I just ask questions and I tell them the facts of what's going to happen. So when you go back a second time, you're going to deliver information, loan mod, forbearance, whatever. We have a vast library. And then you're going to ask them the big question. Will you marry me? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. It's the reason you're on this call. I'm not naive. All of you want to provide for your family by getting more listings. The reality is you're tapping into a data source where people want to do this as their last result. It might happen on your first meeting. It has happened on many of our first meetings. Okay. The truth is when the market turns, people will be quicker to sell. So you need to take advantage of those moments, right? So when the time comes, which is your second encounter forward, you're going to ask them what their plans are. So no matter what they say outside of, I want to sell my house, you say, I understand. And I hope that works out for you. I have one question before we leave. What's your plan B? By the way, this is the same guy who wrote the million dollar converter. He's a great door knocker. And he's the one who wrote both of these scripts. His name is Nino Sabroso. And I like sharing this information every day. I want to be their plan B. Got it? It's as simple as that. I want to be their plan B. No matter what. Can I follow up? Can I be your plan B? Permission, permission, permission. I'm building a relationship. If I don't get them in the first couple of appointments, then I can follow up with them because I've captured their emails and their cell phones. And I can follow up passively. That's our 12-step program. That's our face-to-face -face program. Uh, everybody's listed on our front site. We have coaching calls and archives. We have the uh, home buyers program. Uh, we have an investor who will make an offer. They're not over market value. They are at market value minus commission. Whatever, I tell this to all my students, why wouldn't you take a commission for 6%? Why people cut their commissions is just simply beyond me. But um, yeah. Because you would represent both sides in the transaction. You can actually have access to more money on the close by using our investor. We're not looking to shave deals down or any of that crazy Zillow stuff that they're doing. Uh, next, we have uh, a deal for our investors. They can bring all of their deals in and I'll help them structure their deals. All of our systems are archived, uh, both the AMS, the Monster, every marketing piece I've ever created, every video that I've ever created. You can access all of those. Uh, I've also got a series of white label articles and books on short sales and loan mods and real estate in general, if you want to position yourself as an expert. All of these things have demonstrated themselves to be effective. So there are two ways to join home advocates. You can invest in a one-time fee. Uh, uh, it's a one-time fee with no monthly, okay? It's, uh, right now, it's $4,000 off. It's hilarious to say that. But based on the extension of the moratorium sort of being dragged out market by market, if you are brand new and it's the first time you're hearing this message, you can go to that link that I sent you. Let me put that out again. Uh, where's the chat bar? There's the chat. I'm going to send the link again. Everybody, you can check this in the chat bar. Click on that link. It will open up this page. It will have a link to that article. There are a couple of videos on there. I'll switch these out with uh, this replay. But on there, there's a download for PowerPoint. There's a download for marketing. If this is your first time where you've been watching and you've been waiting. I'm telling you that our regular price is $49.97. We've actually knocked a lot of that price off. It's insane to me. So it's $19.97. I think it's more than 33%. I don't know who set that up. but. Uh, if you are the second way you can sign up, right, uh, you can upgrade if you are a current student. So if you did Short Sale Genius with me, if you are an existing AMS or Monster user and you want to upgrade, yes, you click here and it takes you in. Sign up. 
you will get leads. You get the call center for free. Uh, you get three coaching sessions per week. You get a private one-on-one. -on -one. This is the most extensive ongoing uh, setup that we've ever created, and we're happy to do it. And it's 100% guaranteed. The Home Advocate Marketing System is 100% guaranteed to get you face-to-face -face or Zoom-to-Zoom, -zoom, depending on Delta 19 restrictions, or your money back. We know we'll get you important appointments. We've been doing it for 11 years and they're qualified and we know what they're going to talk about. We are experts in that field. So um, the first before the end of the webinar deal. So for those of you that are thinking of signing up today, right now, the uh, I'm going to give you for the first five people, I don't know what the slide's going to say, but for the first five people who sign up from this webinar, we're going to give you a $500 uh, funnel. What you're looking at is what we call a squeeze page. It'll have your cell phone number. It'll have pop-ups. It'll make you the author of a book called The Alternatives to Foreclosure with another pop-up. You can use this in all of your marketing online, or you can buy a Facebook or Google ad and use this as the squeeze page. This is tested. It works. It's a $500 value, and we will include it for the first five people who sign up to day. I get bonuses. Now let's talk about your training and the reason you're actually here. We're going to talk about direct marketing with our system, right? So uh, for those of you who don't know, we actually have a coaching page. It looks exactly like this. Ooh, we got another lead. We'll talk about those. So when you sign up, right? And by the way, if you go to the main page and you click get started looking for the link, you're going to wind up paying $5,000. That's on the main page. So for those of you that have signed up, you already know this, go to my library. You will see three items in your library. Home Advocate Marketing System, which is the complete explanation of all things Home Advocate Marketing. Second, it is the community page where you can ask live questions. Both Derek and I answer them. Sometimes even students. Uh, we answer those 24 hours a day. It's kind of your basic customer support. We also answer emails and you can call our 800 number. The last is the hub. This is where everything that happens is. If you click on the hub, we have uh, about 10 items on it. The one we're going to talk about today is the 12 step program and go through it really quickly. There has been some kind of weird miscommunication with a couple of people who recently signed up. So I want to go through it one time. So when you click on the 12 step program, right? There are three items in here, right? There is a video by Gilbert. I'll play that in a minute. Uh, there's a video by me on tagging. More importantly is the 12 step program. So let's talk about it. When you sign up, this is a direct marketing method that I've been using for 11 years with all the different programs that I've created. So the first thing you wanna do is click and eat. when you sign up, you wanna click here and it will email us. And I wanna know, uh, your city or your county, preferably right now your county, but your city is very helpful. Eventually, we will be giving you exclusive leads. Right now, we're giving you whatever leads we can get our hands on. That is our only function, right? Next thing you want to do is click on this link and go into Amazon and get yourself some Avery repealable labels. There is an Amazon brand that is repealable, uh, but whatever the case, it's pretty perfect. Next, I need you to click here and download your marketing piece. There are two versions. There's a PDF and there's a Microsoft Word version. Got it? Uh, the Microsoft Word version or the PDF version, don't really particularly care which one. Those are our marketing pieces. The call center is already pre-printed upon it. Got it? So print those out or download them onto your system, either way, but I think you should have them on your system. Uh, then print them out directly onto your Amazon 64 64s. Take your list that you receive from us at the beginning of the month. Right now, everybody's getting about 100 or 200 uh, properties to go and hit. You wanna use Root XL. Uh, I've done this in the video to make it really simple, but Root XL is possibly the simplest uh, and free, by the way, for doing a dozen properties. Uh, it's a mapping software. It's as simple as that. You just tell it to do multiple routes. You can import 
you just pasting, you can do up to 20 for free. You guys shouldn't really be doing more than 18 uh, marketing pieces at a time, right? Keep it really simple. Then you click find root, right? Find the one that's furthest off to the side or find out where you want to end or find out where you want to start. And then tell that is where you want to start. And then find the root and it will. Once you have that root, you can rearrange uh, your marketing, like your actual list. And I actually do it in the video. I'll show you in a minute of how to arrange them. And then you write out the last name and then you use your initials and your tracking number on the marketing piece, right? So this is what it technically looks like when you do it. Let's go over to this page, shall we? And that is, I don't think you guys need sound all that much. So let me enlarge this. So the first thing I did is I shot everything inside of a FedEx office Kinko. I didn't, what do they call FedEx office now? They used to be called Kinko's. Uh, I did it as simple as possible. Then I re-ranked the order of my properties, right? So here it is exactly as I said. I got my route and what I'm doing up above is I'm putting in the number of the order of the 10 properties I was going to. Uh, it's much easier to do it with paper, but I only had a computer available when I did it. And then what I did was sort those numbers one through 10 so that my finished product had a list of where to go. See, there you go. Make it as simple as possible. There you go. There's my lined out list of places that I want to go. Simple, simple, simple. I've got that and I'm ready to go. So the next thing I did for those of you who don't have a color printer, I went over to a FedEx office and I paid my two bucks to print out my labels. It was 48 cents. Really, 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 really simple stuff. In fact, I even showed you how to flip it over and put paper in the printer. I can't make it any easier than that. I actually put it on a, on a flash drive and did the whole thing. So once you have your list and you're ready to go out, right? And you put your last names on your labels. And I even show you how I write them out. Okay. I'm going to bring it back down and then show me writing a last name. It's hard to write and do that at the same time. Last name, and I use the uh, property radar ID number, right? With my initials, I'm ready to go. There you go. That's what a finished product looks like. Let's take a look at that for a second. Last name, my initials, and a tracking number. Be legible, people. If I don't get, uh, wait, let me say this. If I don't get initials when the call center, right, sends back the information, I can't forward you your information. So some level of being legible is really important here. If you don't, then I recommend having someone do it. If you look at it and think that it's not legible, okay, then your homeowner, when they call that 800 number, is not going to be able to read those numbers back. I would recommend a Sharpie if you think there's going to be a problem with rain or anything else, right? And then ultimately, you're going to go to the property. Let me take this over to the property. Do a real simple one. Here's a really straightforward one. You're going to take the marketing piece in your hand. You're going to walk over to the house. Take the marketing piece and put it on either the outside of the mailbox or in this case, the garage door. And I'm basically showing you and talking out loud while I do it. I think in one of the videos, I'm actually yelling out loud. Hey, I'm putting up a label here. Stare at me, stare at me. I even show you what to do with gated communities and all of those different things. The results for those of you that have been tagging or wondering uh, have been very good. And the call center does disclose. So what you're looking at right now on the screen are leads with homeowners across the country. People want to meet with you, right? But here's the stuff that makes me crazy. I cannot make out the tracking number because it's smeared, but it's a C something. <laughs> uh, 
uh, this one wants a delivery. This one wants a delivery. I will be home Tuesday. Responded to the note on the door. Yes, I want a delivery. They want to meet with you. They know you're coming over to talk about their loan mod, their forbearance package, or alternatives to foreclosure. As the gentleman who called us, who was in a pickle, he's already been told point blank, you don't have an option. You need to pay 30 payments to catch up. These are all leads. This goes on and on. I do them every day. I forward them myself every day, every day, every day. I forward them myself, right? And here's how I do it. This is a lead for uh, SR. I actually have, uh, why is it gone? Let me bring this up. And SR would be Stephen Rue. I'm gonna copy his email address. I'm gonna forward this. By the way, Stephen Rue is 70 years old. No excuse for any of you telling me you don't have any of the technology or anything else. We have gotten Steve all the way through the process and now Steve has a lead. What's your excuse? I mean, to be perfectly honest, what's your excuse? And that's everything. I'm sure there will be lots of questions from the room.